Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's a CJ. I want to welcome you guys back to episode 11 of my 120 gallon reef system. Now we're going to dive right into algae scrubbers. Basically going to walk you guys through the full timeline and everything you can expect and the results from using one of these Santa Monica Rain 2 algae scrubbers. Let's jump to it. Now, if any of you are new to my channel, I highly recommend you go back and check out that unbox and the install video I did covering everything you need to know about the Santa Monica Rain 2 algae scrubber. But this video, we're gonna start from the beginning. You know, overall, my plan for the algae scrubber was to go ahead and break it in right away. You know, day one of cycling the tank, considering I was using this dry and nasty Pucani rock, you know, I didn't acid bathe it, I didn't do anything to remove the organics or the additional phosphates or anything else that was inside of the rock. So I figured this was gonna be the perfect time to go ahead and let this algae scrubber break in as I was cycling my tank. Now, even with all those things being said, I had to make sure I kept realistic expectations as far as growth. You know, you gotta keep in mind, algae scrubbers require nitrates and phosphates available in the water before you're really gonna get any real growth or anything, you know, substantial worth even noting. And that's pretty much what I've seen. You know, the first four weeks, pretty much nothing on the bottom of the screen. Now, keep in mind, you gotta make sure that you're walking this up slowly. I have the algae scrubber that includes four Gen 5 lights, but I made sure the first couple of weeks I only started with one light. And as I started to see more algae grow, I slowly increased that to two lights during the first four weeks of the cycle. Now, the reason for that is very simple, guys. It's all about balancing out the amount of light you have compared to the amount of nutrients that are actually available to grow your algae. So keeping those things in mind, everything you've seen over the last you know, few minutes of this video is covering a six and a half, seven week fishless, foodless, you know, boring cycle to where I didn't add anything to the tank. And then I eventually did a water change before I added fish. And I don't mean a few fish. I basically quadrupled the bio load in my system by dropping in four tangs, a flame angel, and a yellow chorus rise. Now that is a huge amount of bio load, huge amount of nutrients, huge amount of waste that's gonna be available for this algae to grow from now. Now, as you guys can imagine, with all that extra waste, the growth of my algae scrubber increased exponentially. I'm telling you, first six weeks of just slow growth and watching this visibly change every single day. Now, keep in mind, I'm only running two lights at this point, and I was really going to wait until more of the algae covered the screen before increasing it to all four lights. But that wait changed pretty quickly after I noticed just how much it changed after two days of growth. So it's time to go ahead and kick this up a notch and really see what this algae scrubber is capable of. Now turning on additional lights in the scrubber is as easy as just plugging them up. Keep in mind there's one power brick so it only takes up one plug on your power strip but it has four individual connections to connect to the LEDs. Now one great thing about this scrubber is the LEDs are waterproof and the cores that connect to the LEDs can actually fit and run outside of my cabinet to where if anything happened and this algae scrubber got fully submerged it wouldn't be a problem at all. When I first installed this scrubber on my system, I got a bunch of comments and concerns about the size of the scrubber. Is it big enough to handle your tank or, you know, what size scrubber should I get for my tank? And I kind of asked those people this question. How much food are you going to feed your tank? You know, how many fish are you going to have in your system? Because sizing an algae scrubber is purely based off the nutrients that are going to be available. So that's why I knew this algae scrubber was going to be perfect for me. Now this Rain 2 system has four LEDs basically lighting the screen from both sides and is rated to handle up to two cubes of mysis, 20 pinches of flake, 10 square inches of nori, or 5.6 grams of pellets. Now that's what it's written to handle, but honestly guys, I've discovered that it can actually handle more. Now before we get into all the test results with the HANA checkers and nitrates and everything I found out, let's take a quick look at the scrubber. You know, remember I turned on all four lights roughly a week ago? This is the results. When I tell you I was surprised, I mean, damn, look at all of this algae. I did not expect there to be an explosion of growth like I noticed. It completely filled the screen. That bald spot that was in the middle, completely full. It's growing over top of itself, and it's honestly growing out of the scrubber box. It's starting to make its way out of the drain pipe on the bottom, and I've even noticed it floating into my return pump kind of clogging it so this is definitely a sign of great things to come with this algae scrubber and for those that are curious you know how did this happen it's based off lighting and nutrients guys 
feeding the tank, you know, two cubes of mice a day, all the fish and tank poop, and the four lights being running 24 seven has pretty much generated the maximum amount of growth possible that I could get from this scrubber. So with all that being said, it's finally time to do my first harvest on the algae scrubber. As you guys notice, super easy to remove. I just basically pull the standpipe, pull the baseboard, and take it to the sink. Didn't even have to turn off the manifold, as you can tell. Not much flow, so no worries there. So now the fun part begins. Now for anyone that's new that's wondering, you know, why are you even doing this? It's all about export, guys. You know, keep in mind, this algae grows from nitrates, phosphates, you know, those dissolved organics in the water column, and whatever else it uses to grow. And it's all trapped inside of it. So if I don't effectively, you know, harvest it and export it from my system, then I'm not helping anything. There's no point in having it. So from what I can tell with the growth that I've noticed, I could easily harvest this once every seven to 10 days and I should have a full screen, just like you see right now. Now, just in case some of you guys didn't notice, I did not over clean the screen. It's very important to leave some algae left because that's basically gonna be what feeds and seeds the next batch to grow. If I went to town, put this under tap water, you know, a brush and completely clean every last speck and speck of algae off of this screen, I would effectively start the whole process over. Now, even though this algae scrubber is not really part of my biological filtration, tap water wouldn't have hurt anything. I don't wanna overdo it and mess up the balance that's already taking place with how fast it's growing and how productive this screen is actually growing for me. So what happens to all this leftover algae? You know, I could easily just toss it all and throw it away, but it has a dual purpose. I can either use it as fertilizer outside or I can feed it to the fish. It is a naturally grown algae and I do have tangs that love to eat it. So, you know, it does cancel out the fact that it's exporting because I'm putting it back in the system, but it never hurts to give the tangs a fresh, you know, homegrown snack every now and then to keep them happy and healthy. Now, for those of you all that are curious about the results, here they are guys. Keep in mind, when I first started this tank, I had phosphates reading 0.51. Basically everything leaching from all the organics breaking down in that Bukani rock. And I didn't bend, I didn't give in, I didn't add any phosphate media, phosphate RX, any you know, Fosgard, any GFO, I didn't add any of it. And what you can see now is the results. Three on the ultra low phosphorus HANA checker is the same as 0 0.009 phosphates. That is a significant drop over eight weeks, and my nitrates are undetectable. Now, after tracking the results of this scrubber for the last eight weeks, I can safely say this thing is the real deal. And for anyone out there that's still debating if you want to try an algae scrubber, definitely go for it. I mean, it's going to do a great job of naturally reducing the things you want to reduce without having to buy GFO and any of those chemical medias to keep your phosphates and nitrates in check. Why not go natural and let it all do the work for you? Now, with all that being said, there isn't such a thing as something being too efficient, meaning the phosphates are dropping too fast in my tank at this point. You know, a drop from 0.51 to 0.009 is good for some, but it's going to hit zero really, really quick. And I don't want to run into the problem to where my system is actually too clean and deprived of phosphates when my corals need it. So what's going to be the easiest way to balance out this situation? Well, honestly guys, turning off the algae scrubber. Well, not literally turning it off, but turning down the photo period because its production is all based off how long the lights are left on. So I'm basically gonna reduce it from 24 hours a day to around maybe 18 or 17 hours a day. Check my parameters and see if it's enough. If not, I'll reduce it more or turn off some of the lights. Basically at this point, I've been running at 100 miles an hour on that scrubber. And until I have 100 miles an hour worth of nutrients in the tank, meaning a lot more fish, a lot more food. There's just no need to have it running so wide open. So I think this is a pretty good point to stop this video.